Morning, everyone. It's uh, Tuesday, the 27th of August. Um, Tuesday's a day I'll quit look at a board game. Uh, I'm quite far away from the camera today, so it's going to be such a big board, this one. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a bit of a struggle to get it all in, but obviously, we'll get the gist of what the game is about, etc. Um, I've had this game once or twice all, all the time, um, and it's... It's one I've not played yet with, with, with my family, but I do really want to do it. But again, it's a two to four player game. So if you've got more than four of you, which we have, it is a bit of a problem. But you can play teams as well, because obviously the young, it's especially about my, my children are growing up now, obviously. But if you've got younger players, it, it's nice for them to play with someone else. And it's quite a good game in the way of um, a little bit of geography as well. I mean, you've got to know Europe and. Um, in parts of Africa, etc. So it's it's quite a, an educational little game as well, but it, it is fun. It looks it looks really fun to me. I've, I've looked at the reviews on Board Game Geek, and um, it's only getting a five point three. But there's a lot of positivity. A lot of people don't like it. But a lot of people don't like roll you know roll the dice. There's, a, there's elements of luck to it as well. As but the strategy as well, and, and you can steal things off people, which is always nice in a game to. Uh, have a little bit of fun and a little bit of chaos between between players. Anyway, this this is it. I mean, we've seen the thumbnail. This is where it is mulled over. An outstanding game that evenly combines knowledge, strategy and luck. A wonderful way for families and friends to be together and to have great fun over 900 questions. I mean, I think originally it came out in um, 2005 uh, and it was a magnetic board, I believe. Um, a massive thing, I mean, even probably bigger than this. This is a compact version, believe it or not. So it's even bigger than this. And apparently, the guy who, um, who let me just have a look, uh, the guy who actually put it together, called Pete Sager or Seeger, uh, with, with Sarah Finch, they're called SG Games. But I've not seen anything, anything, any other output from that, from that, uh, uh games company. Obviously, there's a lot of little games comes where they produce one game and that's it, they don't want to produce anymore. This is quite readily available on. Various uh, websites costing between about 15 and 30 pounds. So, if you like it, you know, at the moment, you can probably pick it up for 15, 20 quid. Again, like any of these things, if they get a bit more rare, they might go a bit more expensive. Christmas time, stuff like that. Board games do tend to go up a little bit. Uh, as I said, it was done in 2005. Apparently, based this, this the guy actually claims he did it because England played Moldova in football, I think, in 1996. Uh, this obviously a few years later, but he thought, oh, what a great title for a for a game. Where is Moldova? So he's combined a a, um, a trivia game, obviously with it. It's a bit of a mix of Monopoly and Trivial Pursuits, if you like. Um, so he, he came up with that idea because of that. And Moldova, I believe, is is still the poorest country in Europe, as far as I know. Um, and it's near. I won't even tell you. You'll have to find out yourself. It is there. Someone said, "Where is Moldova?" And someone said, "It's near Lithuania." So. But it's on here. And, and the old point is, I mean, you can actually play the game and win the game, but they encourage you to give yourself points as well so you can go back and play again and obviously toss up the points over time. But as a one-off game, it's fine. I mean, you don't have to do that. Right, I'll try and get all the, the board in for you and show you, just show you the basics of it. And obviously, it won't be too good on, on seeing all the different countries. So you're gonna, let's see what best angle I can get for you. To try and get as much in as I can to show you. As you can see, it's a massive board, all of Europe. Uh, I've set it up as though it's a free player game. Um, so we've got uh, a black black uh, pawn and got obviously little black markers, blue and red. So I've, I've set it up as though there's, there's three players. Um, each player is dealt five countries to start off with. There's country cards. These are the country cards, which... Can be shuffled these things in all different countries. If you go through all the different countries, you know, there they can be shuffled before you play. And you also have very important what we call strategy cards. Um, you get five of these strategy cards to start the game, but they're very important in the game. Uh, and they tell you obviously they're all the same instructions, all the same things. So as you go through, it, it reminds you how you can play them, etc. So you have five of those to start off with. Um, you could end up with a pile with none of those strategy cards, so don't worry about that too much if that happens. As you can see, it looks a bit a bit confusing. This is only a three-game three game 
replay the game. I mean, so the, you get a big red pawn, for instance. This is going. This is going to be the thing you're going to move about the board. There's a big one, and obviously you've got these smaller ones as well, uh, which actually go on the countries you own. So you've got five countries to start off with, which you are just just given at random. There could be anything. So if you look at the five reds now, they're spread out over the one, two, three, four. Where's the other one? I've lost one. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. So you've got five reds there, all on the capital cities of the countries, these little red pawns. And correspondingly, on the outside of the board are all the countries alphabetically. So obviously Algeria. There's Algeria there. And um, another red one there. That's um, Cyprus. You've got Cyprus, which is down there. And you've got Cyprus on the board. So all the countries are actually on the outside of the board as well. So... You put your points. So it's very important if you if you if you get these countries that you put. Remember to put them on the board and also put them outside. And other people can obviously land on those squares and take your country or challenge you with questions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But these three these become like the start on any any board game. They go to the start spot and you work your way clockwise around the board. The aim of the game basically it's quite simple. It's to get five countries linked by borders. So some of the countries, obviously, Iceland, Britain, are linked by yellow lines to different countries. So that's their partnering country. And the whole idea is to get five countries linked in a line. So you could have, you've got Russia, which is obviously the biggest country. That's why these spare cards sit on Russia because it's such a massive country. If you can claim Russia, so I'll say the, the people playing black on this thing can claim Russia, if they can get hold of Kaz. Kaz, Kazakhstan, there, um, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. If you can get those five countries all lit by borders, so obviously they don't have to be all in a clump together. They just have to border on each other. So the, the, the one who wins is the first to get five countries linked. If you look at the black player, for instance, obviously he's got Ukraine, Russia, and Georgia there. So all he really needs to do is, is collect sort of Belarus, Latvia, Kaz, Kazakhstan. So as long as all the five countries border, that's how you win the game. So his other two are over here. So they they don't look as though they're going to be much use now, yet, you know, if he's doing that. But obviously you could go over here and you could go for France, Switzerland, Italy, Spain and Portugal. He could have those five and win the game. So that's basically what you've got to do. So you start off with your basic countries. And as you go around the board, obviously, you've got, you've got three dice. So you've got two ordinary six-sided dice and a 12-sided dice. It's always fun. Always fun to have a 12-sided dice. As you can see, you're going to have to find somewhere to roll the dice because you're going to start knocking these things all over the place. So you need a separate box to roll the dice. Obviously, kids can play, and that's quite important sometimes because... When you land on your square, so if you say the first player goes and he just throw he just throws a two. So say player 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 the blue player is going first of all, he lands on Algeria. And each of these things have what you have to do. So you've got question things. Basically, you're asked a question, uh, and if you get that question right, you can claim Albania. This is Al an Albanian square. So if you land on there, and you get a question for Albania. All you do is a little question box. Now these have to be, you know, these can't be shuffled. They, these have to be in order. So that's number one of check that. One of 84 cards. But on each one of these, there's 12 questions. Some are multiple choice, so it help, helps the kids out. Some you you have to know the answer, but they are in order. So if you land on that Albania, you literally pick number one, do the question. Once you've done the question, put it to the back. So, and then you go on to number two. So these are all, so obviously all, you are going to go through them all, but then you go through them all again. And obviously, as I say, there's, there's about a thousand questions, so that's not a big problem. Some of these squares, literally, all you do to win the country is you have to roll a three, four, six, or a seven. So you, if you land on that square, Algeria, if you roll three, four, six, or a seven there, you can get Algeria. So you get Algeria. If Algeria is no good to you, I mean, if you don't want it, you might say, "Oh, I'll not bother." You know, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll keep it, obviously, because you, you could, someone could want it and steal it from you later. So, it's, it's how you win all the countries, and obviously, you, you know yourself what you plan on what countries you want to get, 
um, obviously by where your starting point is. I mean, if you look at Red, he's fairly spread out over the place. So got a bit of a challenge to get five five connected there, obviously. But it's, so there's an element of strategy to it. There's an element of luck. Another square there, roll, roll seven or higher to win, a question square, challenge square. So this is where you literally you can challenge you can challenge uh, other players um, with a question. So to, it's always better. I mean, it's, it, there is a two-player version, but obviously they always suggest at least three players. Uh, obviously, one person asks the question, the other two, the first to give the correct answer, would get that get that country. And they can also actually say the, the challenge for another country that someone else owns. So it doesn't have to be the particular, particular country they land on. Um, Little squares where you can go again. So if you land on that, you can move again. Also, if you look at the outside, um, there's actually two. So you can actually move across and go to the outside lane if you want to get one of those countries on the outside lane. Uh, to do this, you need a strategy card. So to cross a bridge, one of these blue, blue, uh, blue, blue tick things, uh, blue arrow things, you would need a strategy card. And that's where the strategy cards come are very important. For certain questions, you can actually try and steal a card. Look at this one. It's a steel square. It's a grey steel square. Uh, there's some of these uh, all over the uh, over the board. There's one there. There's another one over there. And what that allows you to do, but it costs you three strategy cards. So if you collect it every time, if you look at the board, there's actually squares where you, once you pass them, you can collect a strategy card. So you can build up your strategy cards. So you start with five but you can build them up and build them up, or obviously you can lose them. The more you lose them, obviously you've got less chance of winning the game because you do need these strategy cards. So obviously there, if you want to steal, so if you want to steal a country, say you want to finish the game, you only need one and some other guy's got it, you can challenge them, but it will cost you three strategy cards. But you can then challenge that player, and if you get the question right before they do, you get their, their pawn or their country and win the game. So, I mean, there's different ways of playing. It's basic questions, basic ones where you have to roll. There's somewhere, if you roll, you know, it's a free gamble. So, obviously, you have to play a strategy cards with gambles. But if you roll the run, so when they say roll the run, you get free throws to roll the run. So, if you've got, two if you've got three dice, you've got, to, you've got to roll five, six, and seven. But you get three goals. So, if you roll, if you roll the dice and get a five or six on your first one, so you get five... Five six there, then you've got another two goals. Obviously, that could be a, that could end up that's a ten there. So you got five six. So you want a seven or you want a four. So then you throw this. You've got two more goals to to actually get a four or get get a seven, and then obviously you will actually stick. You actually get whatever country you want. So I mean it. It's different. There's a lot of luck involved. There's luck involved with the dice. There's strategy involved getting all the all the right things, all the right countries. You can only ever have 10 countries, so obviously the, the steal is where obviously obviously if someone steals a country off you, you have to you have to obviously say if someone stole Russia, you would have to give them that country, et cetera, et cetera. And you can block people. If, some, if someone's very near to winning, obviously someone's got four countries in a line, you can see what they're trying to do. Other players can then decide, say, you know, join up and say, right, you try and nick that, you try and get that off him, you steal it off him, or or challenge him, make a challenge to a player by making a challenge to a player, you can take his country off him. You see, I mean, it's, so it's quite simple, but it looks more pro perhaps more complicated than it is. The questions, obviously, this is 2011. This is the revised edition, so the questions uh, all in there are obvious. Like any trivia game, it's going to date in time, but it's a lot of general general knowledge questions that doesn't matter about the date. Young kids, I think, would struggle a little bit on their own. It does say seven plus, I think, on the box. I, I would imagine nine plus is probably better. Um, but it's good. I mean, I, I, I want to play this. It, it does intrigue me. And, and looking on Board Game Geek, some people go back and play it time and time again. Uh, as I said, if you're going to roll the dice, find somewhere else to roll them rather than the board because it's going to be... Absolutely ridiculous. You can obviously you can have up to ten countries. So you could have in theory, there's four of you playing. You could have you could have forty pawns on this board. Um, the other oh the other thing as well. Obviously you can um, challenge on there's, there's, if you land on a C square, um, you actually pick up one of the countries, and someone will ask you, "I have a, a bordering country." So say Armenia. 
Does that mean you? So if you land on the C square and you can't look at the board, you're not supposed to look at the boards. This is what makes it harder for the young kids. So the question is Armenia, and someone will ask you either the capital city of Armenia or guess a country border in it. So if you know the capital country of Armenia, you're safe, you can win the thing. If you don't, then obviously you can have a guess at what country borders it. So there is, it is good. It does teach you a little bit of geography, a little bit of geographic knowledge. Um, a good fun game, as they Apparently it's sold in 2011 when it was reissued. Uh, it's let me just bring this back up for you. Don't really want to talk too much more about that. Um, back in 2011, when it's reissued, uh, I think in nine months, the guy claims it, it sold about 6,000 copies. So there's plenty out there. And as I say, there was an original magnetic one which was even bigger. But I mean, I, I think that's uh, pretty good fun. Um, and it tests your knowledge of geography, which you, which is great. You know, I'm not I'm not the greatest on geography, and uh, you know, you sort of just take time to you know, perhaps the younger players just just have a look at uh, just have a look through the. I mean, it's interesting just to look at the map without even playing the game and, and find things out. And obviously, as you say, with the country cards, there's information on there. There's eight, I think there's eight shot of those, um, so you can find out capital cities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and it's a good mix of of luck with the roll in the die and the strategy of collecting your five countries that are connected by borders uh, to win the game. And, and as you say, it, there's a point scheme. So if you actually do get mulled over and as part of your five countries and win the game, then you get extra points for that. So if you are, if you're into doing an ongoing thing where you're going to play it on a regular basis and you do enjoy it, then uh, obviously getting mulled over is quite important to the game. But obviously. It was just an inspiration, really, for, for, for the game in the first place. Where is Moldova? So, as you say, find out yourself and read up on Moldova. There's not much out there on the internet about Moldova, but uh, do you find out. And I always, I always like a game with the 12, something a little bit different with the 12-sided dice on that. Well, that's that. As I say, it's, it's you can pick it up. I mean, this is a, it's an excellent copy. This is this is that one, virtually unused. Um, the sum where the pawns are a little bit, these are quite quite cheaply made pawns, but I mean, they're still good enough for what they are. I've seen versions where they have a solid wooden pawn, which is probably the older version. So, but I'd say it is quite easily available on the various websites. Um, and I think it's good fun. I hope, I hope you, you think it's good fun as well. Uh, so that's that today. Tomorrow I'll be back um, with the UK cinema releases. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you can, Get tell your friends about it. As I say, there's, if you're not into board games, but, but you like films and watch the film reviews, if you're not into film reviews, watch the board games. If you like some older films and watch the poster um, poster reviews I do. So I do five a week. So this is Bernard and Ian YouTube. Uh, I'm going to put them into little playlists. Uh, I've been advised to do that when I get a chance. So you can find anything specific. You just want to look at board games, I'll put a little playlist for just board games. If you look at, want to look at um, older movies and stream movies, I'll have different sections. So that'll make it easy for you to enjoy and watch that. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, push the bell notifications. I'm on Twitter at uh, nostalgia underscore movie. Uh, I'm on Facebook at Bernard and Ian with links to movie game nostalgia.com, which is my website, movie game nostalgia.com. If you put that into your Google search, you'll find me there. Uh, obviously posters, DVDs, board games. I always try and be competitive to the other guys. And if you see a prize somewhere else and I, uh, I'm a little bit higher, give us a chance. Just, just mail me and I can, uh, or tweet me, mail me, whichever, whatever, direct message me on Facebook, whatever you want to do. And if I can better it, I will just for you. So, you know, I'll do that for you. I always try and be competitive. And um, hopefully you enjoyed that. So that's another Tuesday done. The weather is looks lovely. The sun's out. So I'll have me walk later and enjoy that. And um, all I can say, have a great one today. And I'll see you all again tomorrow. We'll just end this.